in terms of the situation that we've now found ourselves facing, you know, we're uh, for record, it's the mid mid April. We're right in COVID nineteen that has changed the way the entire planet and workforce is operating. And that speed of change, what we might have felt comfort in before in how to ask questions, what are the right questions, you know, what processes we have. When all of that changes, um, how we adapt to that new environment, a big part of that is to still remain curious when maybe uh, things are, on one sense, limited. How would you um, either encourage people to be curious when maybe they feel limited uh, because of external circumstances? How would you describe opportunities there? Well, I think we have a lot of opportunity. First of all, we have a lot of time on our hands that a lot of us didn't have in the past. And it there's a chance to really explore the things we never considered exploring. I, I think what I was trying to do with the curiosity uh, research I did was to get people to recognize that they weren't doing enough to explore, to, to get out of status quo thinking. That's kind of how I look at curiosity in the workplace, that we, we fall into this status quo way of doing things and nobody's ever asking, why are we doing this? Why aren't we doing this? Well, you know, how can things be different? And, and when we're home and we've got all this time, I, I think it's really important to kind of focus on the things that have held us back. And that was what my research was all about. Because when I started writing this book, I thought, well, it's really interesting to write about curiosity. I'm interviewing all these interesting people and we've, we've named a lot of them, right? Yeah. And, and I started to think, well, as I wrote the book, uh, I was really surprised by the fact that there wasn't a way to determine what was holding people back from being curious. So there was all these assessments out there and that would give you your level, like here, you know, you're high, you're low, you're in the middle. What? Okay, so I'm low. Then what do I do? You know, yeah. And that didn't help me. And so I looked and I thought, well, I have to create this because I have to know why they're not curious, so that I can tell them how to get curious. Yep. So uh, I think that when we are home and we have this time, we can focus on why we're not curious, how we can get curious when we go back to work, some of the things we can do. This is a good time to create a plan, to create uh, some outline of the things that are holding us back. And in my research, as you know, there are four things that I found that hold people back. And those four things are fear, assumptions, the voice in your head, basically, yep. technology over and under utilization of it, and environment. And that's basically everybody you've ever known in your life. And if you um, write down some of these things under each of these areas that hold you back, then you can kind of do a kind of a personal SWOT analysis and think of uh, ways to overcome these, these uh, weaknesses, these threats, these issues, and put it into SMART goals, measurable goals. And so when we're able to get back to normal, you know, that's what we can do in our work setting. But right now you could do that in your personal life. Read a different uh, part of the paper than you normally would read. Drive a different way to the store if you can still go to the store or whatever it is and look at things differently. But I, what, what I really think it helps in my research, what I think it was really helpful to me and what I was hoping to help people do was to recognize that you're telling yourself these things or that you're afraid of these things or this person had made you think that you could or couldn't do something or that this was the cool thing or not the good thing to do or whatever it was. And I think as you start to recognize these things, you go, oh, I never even realized that was holding me back. And now you can make a plan to go forward. 